Hello there and welcome to another A Star to G briefing. Now, in the UK, if you want to learn a musical instrument uh, in the school sector, you have to hope for that there is something that provided by the schools or something provided by the local authority, a peripatetic service, travelling teachers that go around and teach in all the schools in the area. Uh, it's a bit patchy. In fact, in some areas it doesn't even exist at all. And there are lots of areas in the UK where you can't get an instrumental lesson and it's a real mess. So the government have done something. They've produced a national plan for music education and it's about time, frankly. And it's a very interesting document. It's published on Friday the 25th of November, only a few days ago here in the UK, um, by both the Department for Education and the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, Michael Gove and Ed Vasey, the two ministers. The DCMS being interested in this because of a, of a new role for the Arts Council, who are going to become part of the fund holders and commissioning kind of agency for this scheme. So let's have a look at some of the detail that's in here and try and figure out what it actually means. So the headlines are closure of the current uh, local authority music services on the 31st of July. And that means that if you're in a local education music service, it ceases to exist at the end of July, the end of the academic year. Um, there, are, there are still quite a lot of music services that are open, they're still really, really good and offering excellent service, but they aren't, they aren't in every county, they're not everywhere. So, gone. But they will be replaced on the very next day, on the uh, 1st of August, by music, music education hubs. Uh, and, and they will take over and run the system on 20% less funding over, over a number of years. And if you want to be in a, in, a, in a hub, you need to bid for that, and you, the, the hub bidding process is open now, and it closes by the 17th of February. In other words, your Christmas is going to be spent writing your bid document, making sure that your agreements and your strategies and your plans and your staffing is thought through. Sorry, your Christmas is ruined. Um, now, hubs going to go at a lot less funding, so obviously there's going to be some loss of staff, there's going to be some changes to how you do stuff, and it's a bit strange and awkward to think about this with only you know three or four days since this was published. But of course, yes, there's 20% less funding um, over three years, which means there's going to have to be some economies of scale, there's going to have to be some back office reduction, some reduction of management, reduction in teachers and so on. But you can gain upon this by partnership working, and the document does go on like mad about partnership working, working with other agencies, with orchestras, with community groups, with uh, religious groups, with whatever you can you can come up with basically, they would become part of the hub. The hub won't simply be just a local authority initiative, it's got to be something which is 3D, it's got to be across the whole wider community, across all ranges of music and uh, into the private sector and into the uh, uh, public, uh, the performing sector as well. So you have to work with others. If you're going to maintain what you're doing now, you have to work with others. The other thing that the hubs will have to do is come up with strategies. They are, they are the place where strategies and proactive activity takes place. So you have to produce a CPD strategy, you have to produce a singing strategy. Early years, you have to do a needs analysis. You've got to look at the specialisms, the instrumentation, the uh, genres and styles, compositions, the technology. Uh, you've got to be involved in school choirs. You've got to train people how to run school choirs, either the teachers themselves or supply teachers to run school choirs. School choirs really big up on the agenda. And of course you've also got to have your finger in live music. Live music is still a really important part. You have to get ensembles into schools and get schools to see live ensembles. That could be a really important part. Uh, there's also some extra support, some things which have been long due. There's going to be initial teacher training modules so you can train to be a hub person. Uh, a music educator in your ITT qualification, your, teach, your teacher qualification uh, at university. And also there's this uh, new thing for music educator qualifications, finally, so that everybody is treated equally. It says something like in the document, it says to ensure the wider music workforce is properly recognised. Well, I hope they get recognised financially as well. The other thing that's really big in here is technology. It's got its own annex, and that's a really important thing. 
schools still suffer from uh, patchy technology and a patchy grasp of some ideas of what technology could do in the classroom. So, opportunity for the hubs to become music technology supporters and providers and trainers. They will be able to run courses for teachers, they'll be able to offer uh, technical support that goes out to schools to uh, resolve issues and to advise on purchasing uh, and that really try and make bring an added emphasis that technology should be at the heart of music education as it always has been really for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So an interesting little document and I'm going to be looking forward to hearing about all the stuff that happens and trying to uh, report back to you as soon as I hear anything. Now in terms of the National Curriculum Review there's a paragraph. It's paragraph 27 and it says uh, the government is currently reviewing the national curriculum with a view to making it slimmer with a greater focus on the key knowledge that all pupils should be taught. Now I made a post earlier on about the word knowledge and what does knowledge actually mean because in, in the old programs of study it talked about knowledge, skills and understanding and there was quite a a, a, a grasp of that now. We kind of understand what knowledge, skills and understanding mean. But the new curriculum review and the, the, re, the, the words that have been uh, used to define this curriculum review refer to knowledge uh, with a greater focus on the key knowledge. Now we don't know what that means yet. It's still not out. We're still not sure what Michael Gove's thinking is on knowledge. Is it simply the facts and figures, the names of all the composers and the kings of queens and the dates in order? Is that what knowledge is? Or does Michael Gove's definition of knowledge include skills and understanding? We don't know. But I just thought I'd mention that because it's still worrying me a little bit that this curriculum is just going to get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed down to what you can write about and what you can be tested on, not about what you can do and what you can think about. So there's a little note of concern about the National Curriculum Review. So, importance of music, don't bother reading it, but let's keep an eye on it. Thanks very much.